Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we're talking Alpha Arbutin, a super popular skincare ingredient that's getting a lot of heated debate online at the moment. Alpha Arbutin finds its way into a lot of our most popular skincare products, such as these, the Ordinary Alpha Arbutin 2% and the Topicals Faded Discoloration Serum. It's a powerful pigment corrector that can over time fade hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and discoloration. However, some recent studies have questioned just how safe it is for use in over-the-counter topically applied skincare, and this has got a lot of people questioning whether they want to continue to use it in their skincare routine. I always think the best consumers are informed consumers, so I've read those studies and I want to pick apart and share with you kind of what those findings are. A lot of people are worried that these style of products are going to be banned in a number of territories in the coming months, and I've got some thoughts and feelings on that too, so sit back, relax, let's talk all things Alpha Arbutin. Now before we get into this video, just a quick reminder to do all that youtube stuff if you haven't already. I only want to get this message out there. I know a lot of people use this ingredient and might have some concerns about it. A great way of helping me to achieve that is by reaching down and giving this video a big thumbs up and a like. The more likes a video gets, the more widely YouTube distributes it on its platform. So it's just a great way of helping me to get this message out there loud and clear. If you can't get enough of some Mad About Skin content, we're now also over on TikTok. And I would love for you to join and follow us over there too. The handle is at Mad About Skin and I've left a link in the description box below if you want to check it out. Whilst my heart is always going to be with YouTube, there is a space for some short form content. I think TikTok fits just that little bit better. So check us out if you want a little bit more content than just the video you're watching today. I've got an awful lot to cover in today's video, so I think it's time we just cut that waffle and delve straight on in. I've broken today's video down into various different segments. The timestamp's in the description box below, so if you want to want jump to one section over another, be my guest. It's all there for your convenience. So let's start quickly with what is alpha arbutin? Well, it's a precursor to hydroquinone. Hydroquinone is one of the most popular viral and hyped pigment correcting ingredients on skincare planet Earth. It works super super quickly to break apart excess pigment, it'll even out the skin tone, tackle dark spots, discoloration and even really stubborn and persistent melasma. Unfortunately hydroquinone has had a bit of a rocky ride with regulators recently. Quite some time ago it was actually banned over the counter here in the European Union because the regulators decided that the side effects of hydroquinone far outweighed the benefits that you could get. So they said it should become a prescription only medication and that's been the case for many many years. Recently over in the US the FDA actually Actually took the same course of action and banned hydroquinone in over-the-counter treatments and made it a prescription only medication. I think some of the side effects you get with hydroquinone can be quite severe. It can trigger quite a lot of sensitivity, redness and irritation in the skin. If you don't use it correctly it can actually trigger rebound hyperpigmentation which means it ends up worse than what you started with which of course nobody wants. Also there were some studies done a while ago showing it could in some circumstances become carcinogenic which again is something you definitely have to be aware of which is why I'm so glad to see this ingredient move to being under that direction of a medical professional, dermatologist, esthetician or doctor. Because of the increased restrictions on hydroquinone, a lot of brands started to reformulate their products, ditch the hydroquinone and use alpha arbutin instead. Because it's a precursor and a derivative, over time you will get very similar outcomes to hydroquinone, but you have to have a lot more patience because it's not as quick acting. But you get those results with far fewer side effects than what you get with hydroquinone, which is why the regulators were happy to accept it in topical skincare in a way that they weren't willing to accept hydroquinone. I got some great results with Alpha Arbutin. I used it quite consistently in my skincare routine around three years ago and it definitely evened everything out, broke apart that pulled pigment and helped fade my acne scarring. I didn't get too much sensitivity from it so I think it's applicable for a wide range of skin types which is why a lot of brightening or glow enhancing formulations now have Alpha Arbutin as a core staple ingredient. So we kind of know what Alpha Arbutin is, how it works on the skin and who it's applicable for. So what's all this chatter online? What are these studies and why is this something this concern about this ingredient? Well it all links back to two recent studies done in the European Union and an older one done out of Australia. These studies actually questioned how safe Alpha Arbutin is to be used in topically applied over-the-counter skincare preparations. And all of this links back to hydroquinone. It's been known for some time that under the right conditions Alpha Arbutin can actually transform in the skin to hydroquinone itself which as we know has been banned for various different reasons. This kind of got a lot of the regulators alarm bells ringing so they started to sample various alpha arbutin products, see what the concentration of hydroquinone really was in them. 
It might have a zero concentration to start with, but over time, under these certain circumstances, such as a low pH environment, intense heat, certain UV wavelengths of light, this can actually start that conversion process. What the regulators don't want is us using hydroquinone on the skin without that medical supervision. I think the most recent study done by the SCCS out of the European Union, that's like the scientific body that advises the consumer rights regulations um, out of the European Union. They said that they couldn't conclude that there was any safe percentage of alpha arbutin to actually use in topically applied skincare. This got a lot of people into full panic mode, say, okay, is this just not safe to use on the skin? That's actually not what that study said. What they said is without doing a greater in-depth analysis of this conversion to hydroquinone, the percentages involved, and how that all takes place, they can't actually say for certain that certain percentages are safe to be used over the counter. This doesn't mean that alpha arbutin is going to be pulled from the shelves tomorrow. What it does mean is likely that more studies are going to take place to look at that conversion from alpha arbutin into hydroquinone and how this actually takes place within a skincare product and then they'll probably advise on the back of that. I think it's probably likely down the line that regulations will be tightened around the use of alpha arbutin. We saw this air with Australia where it was banned a couple of years ago. They've actually relaxed that recently and as long as brands can demonstrate that the percentage of hydroquinone in, um, in the product Product is below a tolerated threshold, then it's allowed for sale. I imagine the European Union will go down this route and then later on down the cycle, the FDA might follow suit too. I don't think there's anything to worry about when it comes to alpha arbutin. I continue to use it in that faded serum that I referenced earlier, which is one of my favorite hyperpigmentation treatments. I just think we should all be aware because like I say, the best consumers are informed consumers. And I think down the line, we should expect some changes to happen with this ingredient and for it to be more tightly regulated. I'm going to continue to use it and enjoy it for the benefits that it brings. Don't forget, hydroquinone, if used in a supervised way, is a great hyperpigmentation treatment. I think what regulators don't want is for us to be using it unsupervised, slapping it onto our skin and not really understanding what we're using. Of course, in a lot of these preparations where that conversion has happened from alpha arbutin into hydroquinone, it's not actually, the hydroquinone isn't actually on the ingredients list because that conversion has happened post-manufacture, which I think, again, is another issue that's coming up with those regulators. The SCC CS is saying that what they need to do is a little bit more data study, a little bit more analysis into this conversion before they can make any concrete findings on what percentage of alpha arbutin is safe and sh should be used in topically applied skincare. So there you have it guys, hopefully that's clarified everything for you when it comes to alpha arbutin. In summary, do I think this ingredient is going anywhere anytime soon? No I don't. I think there's going to be a lot more studies and investigation into that conversion to hydroquinone before the regulators will be willing to make a call on what the safe percentage should be tolerated in various over-the-counter skincare products. I'm going to continue to use this ingredient. I've got great benefits, but I think, you know, as consumers, we should make sure we have that all that information to make the right call for our own skin. If you're not feeling that you want to reach for Alpha Arbutin anymore, don't worry, there's some other fantastic pigment correctors. And I covered some of my favorite alternatives in a recent video, which I'm going to leave a link to up there. Tranexamic acid can work wonderfully. Azelaic acid can be fantastic. And both of them don't trigger too much redness or sensitivity. So it's suitable for most skin types. The great alternatives for alpha arbutin for those that want them. I would love to answer any of your questions or concerns that you have, so leave them in the comments section below. And I've left some links to these studies that have been done in the description box, so if you want to have a little bit of a read for yourself to see what it's all about, it's all there for your convenience. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, I love your skin. Take care. Bye!